So, uh, the lighting broke. And that makes this level pretty gloomy in a lot of places. But, come on, it's me. Adverse weather conditions are not going to stop me from flying. Hello and welcome, I'm RC and I've got another legendary All Schools On run for you today. Or Lazo or Lasso as some people like to pronounce it. So also, since I don't die in this, this is also the same as Mythic Difficulty. Uh, the colloquial term for a difficulty above Legendary, which is basically Lazo, but you know, I'm not cheating with save and quip. So this run ends up just about 24 minutes, which is currently the fastest one that has been done so far. You can do it faster than this, obviously, you'll be able to see plainly for yourself where is I can improve. But this is the first time I've done this level, so I'm not going to go complain about being the fastest. As I said, the lighting broke, so some areas, the little spotlights and the special lights, they all work fine. But other, the general lighting doesn't work properly. So I'm just going to pick up this guy's sticky detonator, and don't run around that corner too fast, because otherwise the jackals will shoot you. So this door is going to take a little bit of time to open. God, it's so dark, look at that. I uh, want to start killing everything in this first immediate area also take out him. Sometimes these grunts will throw grenades at you and if that happens then just book it around the corner, take some cover and then come out and shoot them again. Deal with all the grunts first. If you're feeling awesome you might want to shoot these guys from way off there if you can be that accurate. That's actually pretty hard to do. Uh, I draw a reticle on my screen with a little bit of blue tack. Some people are purists and say that that's uh, cheap and whatever but I always say I'd rather fight the enemies than the controls. I'd just really like to know where I'm actually shooting. So you don't have to continue around. Jump on this railing to do a sprint jump and get to here. You can also do this from various other locations, slightly over to the right as well. Hit the button fast as can be, click. God, I wish they were all like that. And then I'm actually going to take this guy out with a sticky detonator as well. You can actually just run across away from this guy. God, look how dark it is. I can't get over that. <laughs> I really can't. Um, it's usually a lot brighter than this. And then there are four elites here. This is kind of the trickiest part really. Just picking up a DMR there, it's kind of hard to see again. <laughs> I'm, it's going to take me a while to get over that. So there's a jackals up here. Sometimes they'll shoot at you, sometimes they actually sort of die on their own. Don't need to worry about them too much. So if you're up here, the elites should start coming at you. Elites are actually slightly easier to deal with in Halo 4 than they were in Halo Reach. So if you're used to those elites, you should have a little bit of an easier time of it. Also you can do this move, sort of run past them to their left on their sword arm and you should be able to get around them. Oh, two elites, don't want to deal with that. Ah, oh, this jackal is still here. He's got a shot on me, but with Mythic Skull, sorry, the Tilt Skull, you can actually take a shot and not worry too much about it from the beam rifle. come back in, in here trying to find the camo module I'm going to use that quite extensively for most of the hallways of this section for most of the hallways of this level whoops there's another elite I'm going to take him out as well another elite is coming upstairs I'm going to do the same move on him there we go And this one didn't even realize I was there, so I can just run her after him. Get the assassination. Yeah. Now, I do want his concussion rifle. And this allow me to do this skip that you saw at the start of the video. This skips the sort of back third of the level, and there's a whole bunch of enemies there that you can avoid by doing the strip. Here's the forklift, which is kind of hard to see in the dark. I like to put my foot exactly there, and then shoot here. And then you get protected up really high. For this trick to work, you absolutely must have the cowbell skull on. If you don't have the cowbell skull on, it will not work. So that's why I didn't put it in my guide for this level, which was absolutely no skulls. Do it exactly like Dai did from the initial spawn point of that forklift truck, and it should work fairly consistently, really. But again, you definitely need cowbell on for that. Just picking up a shotgun. That'll help me with these guys. 
Just throwing a few grenades to try and get their back armor off. Didn't quite work. Doesn't matter, soften them up a bit anyway. Hunters are actually a little bit easier to deal with in Halo 4 than they were in Halo Reach. They've got slightly less health and their hitboxes for their swings at you aren't quite as big either, so you can avoid them a little bit more easily. Whoops. And also they don't do as much damage to you when they swing at you. Just another sticky detonator. Again, same principle, try and soften them up, try and get that back armor off, give me a bigger target. Didn't quite work, didn't do quite enough damage. Another shotgun there against the lockers, which I'm going to back up and pick up. Again, I'm going to use my frags, soften them up. Not really necessary, but I'm not going to use them for the rest of the mission, so it doesn't matter. Again, to rush out, do the dance with him. There's another sticky detonator in that crate behind me. Uh, it's now in front of me, so you can use that as well. If you're running out of shotgun or melee, I'm gonna pick up my DMR. I've, there are actually quite a few DMRs scattered around that tower I was fighting the elites in. Well, the two little floors of complex. So pick up as much DMR while you're there as you can. And I've also got my concussion rifle still, because I'm going to use that for another trick later on in the level. Just going to skip past this cutscene. There we go. And this is the composer area. I don't know what to call it. Whoa, look at that. Look at that contrast. I actually really like that. I think this, some areas actually look better with the lighting broken. That's so cool. That's the thumbnail right there. Doctor, what was that? So don't worry too much about getting across here very quickly. This door takes a little bit of time to open. Just sort of uh, admire the scenery. We can reactivate them. I can program the station's defenses to I thought in general Halo 4 sort of had a little bit of a washed out look to it, so this is actually kind of interesting in some areas. In other areas it's just a pain in the ass. Like uh, spot the marine. Oh, it's the one with little white stings in there that's vaguely moving. Killing him is not necessary, obviously, you can just wait for him to open the door. But killing him just saves a few seconds. Uh it's really not necessary, but I'm just a little obsessive compulsive about trying to find skips and use them to save time, even if overall um, this is not really a speedrun at all. So I've got the DMR, and obviously that's one of the most powerful rifles you can get in Halo 4 campaign to use against the enemies. Because of the power of this single shot, it still makes jackals stumble, and I'm also using my camera to get around corners and take them by surprise. And speaking of surprise, this elite I was not expecting that at all. I've never seen him do this before, so it was completely surprised when he ran in like that. And I just had to completely infobrise about what to do. Just gonna have to get back in there. Try and camo or something. Usually he stays further back, back where the grunt on the turret is. I do not know why he came up here. Maybe he was confused by the lights being out. And he's so confused he actually runs into a door. So I really don't know why that happened. So there's some more grunts. Should be about four, I think. That was one. Usually there's two here that were next to the jackal. Seems they've moved off down there. With their elite commander running in at me for some reason. Throwing a grenade, get that grunt off the turret. Just makes him easier to headshot. You can still head to them while they're on the turret, but I find it's a little tricky sometimes. And especially if you don't have an explicit reticle, then you're sort of shooting in the dark a little bit. Now this is the first airlock area. This is the one of the areas where you can sort of punch the little buttons on the doors and blast the enemies out in space. Yeah, but why bother when you don't need to fight anything? So you need to run all the way back up to this back of this area and come up to here so you can see it. And I'm actually camoed here and I'm just going to sprint through. You shouldn't take too much damage here. And then this guy, you want to get shields back from him. Then headshot everything you can. And then a jackal and an elite are going to come down from the hallway at the back of this area. Just going to sneak around with camo on. There's a the jackal. And I'm going to move this box up a little bit. 
depending on what the elite does, this may or may not be useful. So I can get a look around the left hand side of the box as well. Sometimes he moves up and engages the marines and the scientists that are in, hidden in the little alcove to the left. He didn't this time. I don't actually know what the trigger is. So this is what he generally tended to do when I was playing it. So this is what I just planned for. And so basically, I approach, I'm camoed. I want to see what he's doing. He's in patrol mode. That's good. That means he'll move around a little bit. And sometimes he'll go and stare at the wall for some reason. So when you do that, I can actually run in, assassinate him. Boom. And it was very important to preserve my shields. I didn't want him to see me before I did that. Because if you get in a melee battle with him, uh, you definitely need full shields. Because those two grunts that I just killed there will start shooting at you. <sighs> okay. Now, this is the second use for the concussion rifle. I'm going to skip this one as well by getting outside the map. And uh, this is really hard to see. It's slightly easier to see <laughs> when the lighting isn't broken. So but I'm going to cushion, cushion rifle up straight and then off to the side. So I um, end up on top of the roof, basically, of that area. Don't go too off to the left. Otherwise, you might fall down and just fall off the map completely. And then once you're up here, there's sort of some invisible barriers that you're going to have to jump over. Uh, you really are going to have to feel your way out and just do this and sort of practice it. And if you jump at the loading point at the right time, you'll actually get teleported back down into the corridor here. That didn't happen because I was sort of stuck on geometry. That's no matter. Come to the back here, just walk, and you should be able to drop down through the ceiling there. And you've just skipped the entire second airlock, which you do have to fight through ordinarily. Here, run in, assassinate, and then hopefully you should be able to get him as well. And if you're camoed, that'll take him by surprise, he'll rage at you. And you should have full shields from this first elite assassination anyway. So even if you do have to engage him in a melee battle, they're not very effective in close quarters combat to Halo 4 elites. And there's a sticky detonator in here, which I'm going to pick up and use and there's a more DMR in here uh, it's really hard to see and then I'm sending a tweet right now so that's why I'm not moving I'm like holy dude it's so dark in here the lighting is completely broken this is crazy playing on laser like this so that's why I'm not moving there we go get Cortana back I'm giving you tips and advice here, but do bear in mind that this isn't built as a guide. This is just me playing through the level for my own completion. I can't stop people from using my videos as guides, so I do try and throw in some tips there anyway. But don't blame me if things go wrong, okay? Look how dark I am. It's so silhouetted. Try and not get into that animation, because it just slows you down. And you don't want that when that jackal's shooting at you. So here... There is actually a way to skip a lot of these enemies. You'll have to take out the first group and then come up to the entrance to that last hallway, camo, and they can actually jump off the sides and down into a little area. And then you can get to the end and the door will trigger to open. And then you should be able to camo up the edge and jump up and run in behind the enemies. And the door closes so quick, a lot of the time you should be able to get past them and not have them kill you. But this is my first time completing the level. I'd come so far, I didn't want to die. So I was just jumping up and down there, taking out all the little enemies, the grunts and the jackals. And then this elite, this spec ops elite with the sword is actually approaching me. And here's a cool little trick. Let me show you. can actually assassinate them through stairs. He's taking his time. There he is. Boom. Gone. And sometimes you can get the other one to come up here as well. But he was just hanging out back there. So I dealt with him in another way. I'm just going to find where he is. And this is what I'm going to use a sticky detonator for primarily. Camo in. Coming around the corner. Being sneaky. Gonna move up. It's unnecessary using the boxes for cover when I'm already camoed. 
stick him with it and then he dodges like crazy because of the tough luck skull and they're stuck to them they keep trying to dodge away from it and sometimes that makes them easier to assassinate because they're moving around rather than shooting at you or throwing grenades and sometimes it makes them harder because they are moving around so much but that time I just decided you know what screw it I don't need to kill I'm just gonna run through so a whole bunch of these grunts have furod guns and sometimes if you're getting in the mantis it takes so long to get on its feet and back up and the mantis isn't really effective against infantry I mean you're still pretty protected you're probably not gonna die but it actually takes quite a lot of effort to kill these infantry with the mantis and I decided, you know, I'm going to blow them up with a sticky to the end here. And then I realized, ah, uh, I'm an idiot. I should just DMR them. DMR, one head up, boom. So that's what I eventually did. Again, these guys should be easier to see if you've got proper lighting on. <laughs> uh, this lighting glitch, by the way, if you ever encounter it, it's fixed by just restarting your Xbox. And then it should be fine but it just seemed to affect the whole game, every single level, like once it actually triggers. It's happened to me about like three times now. It's kind of annoying. So once you're in the Mantis, pretty much game over. You're basically a walking god. It's gonna be a whole bunch of phantoms coming in, dropping off infantry, dropping off a few vehicles. Vehicles shouldn't be a problem. Tilt Skull actually gives you a bit of a damage bonus with the chain gun against vehicles, so you can rip through them pretty easily. Tilt Skull also makes it slightly easier for your shields to get taken down by plasma weapons, but the Tilt Skull, because you've also got health in the Mantis, they still won't be able to take you out very easily. And then the Mythic Skull doubles your vehicle health, so you are really, really durable. That is the first wraith. Here's a ghost. It's probably two wraiths usually, and usually about four ghosts throughout the whole section. Here's the second wraith. Looks like it's going to be dropped around the back of the composer there. Things to watch out for are elites and grunts with furo guns coming up close to you. The wraiths aren't really a big problem as long as you keep mobile, they're pretty bad shots. In fact, the guys on the guns are probably going to do more damage to you than the actual Wraith Mortars themselves. Where's the Wraith gone? There he goes. See, look at that. Wraith Mortar just goes straight past me. Guy on the turret is actually damaging my shields. So be wary, as I said, of guys running up to you. Some of them have Fjord guns. I don't think this guy does. Kind of hard to see from this range. But if they come at you, take them out. Oh, no, it's the one behind him. Banshees. Now, the Banshee waves, you have to take out four of them for it to progress to the next wave. You do have to kill some of the Banshees for it to bring in more Phantoms. And this is the same position I chose for my Legendary Guide, which is on RCBGS. Whoa, this guy's got a bit too close. And if they do do that, get really close to them, because they don't want to shoot themselves with the splash damage of the Furod Cannon. So just run up to them and just like either stomp on their faces with the RB Mantis Stomp, or just shoot them down. These Banshees shouldn't be too much of a problem if you're hiding in behind this rock, which I think is overall the best placement. Uh, it just looks like a big black thing without the lighting on. Ouch. I'm taking a few hits, my shields are down. But because I'm so durable, because of the mythic and tilt skulls, which do actually help you in vehicle sections, it's not much of a problem. Here we go. That's all the Manches I need to kill kill any of the remaining aggressive banshees just for the hell of it and then looks like there's one stuck on the wall to the side there 
they're really smart at the Manchi AI, by the way. Like, they just really take the cake. So, when Cortana says, where is he? That means you're actually pretty much done. You've only got one more wave of phantoms to come in. Two more phantoms. And then some banshees in behind that. You don't actually need to kill anything from those two groups. This final phantom that I'm shooting at now. And the one behind it. And the group of banshees, you don't need to kill them. It's all just a timer by now. But since this again, this was mythic, legendary all scores on, so do you know what? I really don't want to die now. I'm just gonna kill some of these banshees, you know? That's all the enemies you have to deal with. Uh, you shouldn't have any trouble. If you get to this point, you should be basically done. Just some grunts here and there. Sometimes there's a couple of ghosts over there. There they are. They're still alive. These last couple of that are dropped. Ooh, watch out for that, by the way. That's actually a human machine gun turret that was placed by some of the marines, and you can see it when you first come through it. Unfortunately, when you first come through it and you try and rip it off so they can't do it then, it just gets reset. The Covenant just walk up the ramp. They just say, like, hmm, do you know what? I'm going to use this. And sometimes they can shoot you from really long range. Just be aware that it's there, and don't be too gung-ho about getting yourself out in the middle of the open and getting gunned down by this machine gun turret. Can't unfortunately see it from very long range. The level of detail leaves a little to be desired. Boom. I think that's all the enemies now, really. Don't see anything else. You can actually take either left or the right doors here, doesn't matter. And uh, pretty much done. Well, I say we're done. There's obviously still some time in this video. Because obviously you're just sort of stuck in this little elevator, watching basically an interactive cutscene play out. The Havoc Mines will be in one of the cargo bays. Start us up. Just gotta hit a button, and then there's another button when you get to the top of the elevator. Look how dark it is, though. <laughs> I'm still not over that. It's so dark. So, uh, not really, unfortunately, much to do in here. Just watch the show, basically. kind of more awesome with the lighting broken. It's just all red glow, and that's Cortana, it. See if you can raise Tilson. Get me a status on the rest of the station. I can't believe it. So, this is my sixth mission done now. I've just got two more. Infinity and Midnight. Don't think about the die dead. Again, these are really hard to do solo without deaths. So, I can't give you an exact schedule for those. Tilson. Again, do them as soon as I can. I know people have been enjoying the laser videos. But in the meantime, I'll still be doing some more legendary solo no deaths Spartan Ops. And there'll also be some, hopefully, interesting videos that I'll be posting on RCVGS too. Oh, and we can admire the ridiculous level of detail on these control panels. Mm, origin unknown. How informative. Boom. Game over. So that was Composer, Lazo, No Deaths. If you've got your annotations on, you'll have a link to the previous one I posted, Requiem on the left, and you'll also have a link to the playlist for Legendary All Scores on in Halo 4. And on the right, you'll have a link to my Legendary Solo Guide for the Last Level Midnight that's on RCVGS. Those will also be in the description if you don't have annotations on. I think that's it, so I'll see you guys next time.